Well, hi, and welcome to my shop here. It's August 18th. Ooh, August 18th already. And I'm going to make a pretty short video here because uh, it's, I'm getting a late start this morning. It's just too nice again outside. It's fantastic. So I do want to be outside, not in my shop here. But I think what I'll focus on today, uh, just to make this really quick and straightforward, is this big capacitor here which has looks like the number 14 written on it for some reason in pencil who knows what's going on with it it's connected here and it's tied to the chassis here so um, it's connected to this terminal which we know now is the old terminal cut off the original filter capacitor so it's right on the filter system now to some degree, the big electrolytic capacitors here that are smoothing out the power supply uh, output uh, have another purpose, and that is they create a signal ground through which the signal can pass to find ground. So in other words, when a signal looks at, for instance, uh, the B plus uh, line coming from the power supply, the alternating current signal sees it as a short to ground. Now the problem is at higher frequencies this doesn't work so well because at higher frequencies electrolytic capacitors don't do a very good job. So they provide a little bit of impedance to higher frequencies. So to compensate for that an additional capacitor is often installed. I'm guessing that's what this is. And it's just paralleled in with the other capacitors. Before I say too much About this, um, you would think one of the leads coming out of this capacitor would be tied to the old terminal, but they're not. How come I didn't notice this yesterday? Okay, don't know for sure what's up with that. I would guess this is the. Uh, there, it is actually connected. This wire comes here. Then there's another wire right off the terminal. It goes right here. To this terminal so so yeah so okay very good okay let's find this capacitor on the schematic and then we'll uh, see if it's true what I said about its position and things I didn't think that's what it would be doing but uh, there's another capacitor in here that maybe I'll go after today too let's let's take a look at the schematic see what we can find here okay so here's the schematic and uh, the part we're interested in, the area, is down here in the power supply. And we're looking for capacitors that are tied between the B-plus line and ground. So if your eye hasn't spotted them already, they're not far from where my cursor is. So here's the B-plus line right here, on top of these two uh, capacitors. And here we go up here. Okay, we skip over, and now we're on this line. So point one and a point one and a sixty thousand in between. That sort of looks like a pie filter here. This must be a connection. Here it's hopped over. Two fifty volts. Two fifty volts in brackets one twenty five, which I still don't understand what they're talking about here. One twenty five. Same thing here. Seventy volts. Fifty five. Get it. There's probably a note in here somewhere that explains that. So is this the guy, 0.25? It's a look like the largest capacitor in there. If we look at the capacitor sizes, we see uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. There's one, uh, 0.25. All the rest are quite small. So it's only one 0.25. That by far that would be a large capacitor compared to the rest. That's what I'm looking at in the radio. So I think that's what that is. So if that's the case, then, then the capacitor, the big one, is on this line, which is the part of the bias, the negative bias trick that's being played in the power supply here. It's a pretty big filter, but you know where it goes. It goes right onto the grid of the output tube, uh, a very sensitive location for unwanted signals to get amplified. So where would the unwanted signals come from? Probably falling on these resistors and then ending up on this wire. Or it could be some kind of feedback thing going on. Uh, 
in any case, they've put this large capacitor here to firmly ground out this wire in terms of alternating current. Meanwhile, DC current's doing something different here. So that guy, if he was bad, what would happen? Well, you could get some kind of feedback squeals and screaming that's not happening in this radio. Get reduced output, probably. Uh, maybe some other phenomenon I'm not that familiar with. Doesn't seem to be exhibiting this kind of trouble. But nevertheless, that big capacitor's got to go. Now, I expected this capacitor to be on the B plus line or the screen line. Let's pick off a screen. So if we go over to this tube, the screen is a certain element. Here, here it is here. This, this dashed line and this other dashed line, which is running into a straight line right below it, or a dotted line. So it's a little odd looking. Two dashed lines hooked up here. So this is the screen. Now somehow they will have a filter on the screen. And lo and behold, look what it is. It's this thing. Okay, but that's not a, that's not a, those are two, uh, you know, medium-sized capacitors, 2.1s. There's the other point one right there. Also, a large capacitor, sort of at the bottom of the grid circuit. Kind of think of it that way, and there's the battery. Doing its thing or not doing its thing. Okay, well, I found the 3.1s, and this is the only one, it has to be this one. Well, let's cut it out. That's my target is to go for the big one. I thought this would be sitting on on this line here. I, I thought this guy would be doing what this is doing. Okay, let's get this. We'll go back to the radio. We'll cut out that capacitor, get the test, and stick another one in here. 0.25 is a fair. I don't, I don't stock a lot of those. I better check and make sure I have one. Well, I may have to put in a larger capacitor, but that wouldn't be a problem. So this is a 0.5. I think that's a 0.25. Let's cut that guy up and see if it matches with the uh, with the schematic here. I'm gonna mark this terminal. try soldering right to the chassis here because that's just about impossible. So I'm going to leave a length of wire. I can solder to. What do we got here? Auto Light Tiger. I don't think these are well respected. It just has a number 35107. And then it's got what looks like 14 written there. red marks on it. <laughs> Where's this thing been? So I'm going to try to find out what an Autolite Tiger 18107 is. And we'll see. I'm going to ask Mr. Internet that question. Well, here's what I found. CanadianVintageRadio.com And here's what they say. I was recently working on a Rogers battery set for a friend. Set was populated with a mixture of Autolite Tiger brand and Mica Mold Bakelite body capacitors. Mica Mold ones were the domino type, their values could easily be determined. However, the Autolite Tigers had only a part number identifier, and the schematic I have is a very poor scan, and many values are difficult to determine. Not having any information on the part numbers for this brand on hand, I was tempted to use generic values and using the actual physical size of the capacitor as a guide. However, a search of the antique radio forum turned up this posting under a rather obscure title of Purpose of 10 Microfarad Dry Electro... <laughs> okay, so here's a list. Here's a list. What else is, oh, lots of people are talking here. Let's see. So mine number is actually 38107. 38107, there you go. 0.25 matches the schematic 400 volt capacitor. And I think I'll put a 0.5 in there my, my, myself. Well, that's great. Well, thank you, uh, Ger uh, Jerry O'Hara. I think Jerry O'Hara is the guy who wrote that. Key master. Okay, we should also test this. Uh, I think maybe I'll do the test now. We'll see what we get. 
guessing, just guessing ahead of time, which I like to do, um, it's probably going to test pretty good because many of the other capacitors have. We will see. Okay, so we're on the 50 volt setting. And as usual, it's just a little hard to see and see if I can trick my camera. Well, I suppose because it's going to get very, very hard to see the pie down here, but it's there. Get your hand away there, Jim. There it is. Now you can see the pie out of focus. <laughs> okay, hit the switch. What's it do? It's going to take a bit to charge up, I would imagine. Charging, charging. And I'm going to give it a long time here. Well, that's pretty good. It's open almost all the way. 150 volts. Okay, charging, charging, charging. Barely opening. Yeah, it's opened about 20% maybe at most. Maybe we can barely see it there. Yeah. Well, okay. Now, the position of this on a grid. Hmm. A little leak. Eh, we measured the grid potential of the output tube and it was normal. It's minus 16. So, is this capacitor causing trouble? Probably not. Can it cause trouble? Look, it's beautifully sealed around the ends here. One of the areas that's that's difficult is right where the wire comes through because when you're in, when you're installing it, where the wire comes through. When you're installing this, of course, you're bending it and doing stuff, and you can kind of loosen it up here and, and, and the like. There are ways to do it where you, you avoid straining the capacitor, but okay, that's the story. Put in this capacitor. Okay, let's see if I can just do a little sandpaper operation on this wire here. <laughs> a little tiny piece of wire. surface up a little bit. Okay. I'm going to go behind this wire here. So soldering so close to the chassis is a bit of a challenge because the chassis is drawing away the heat as fast as you can stick it in with your soldering iron. And if you go right onto the chassis, you need something bigger than what I've got here. Probably one of those Weller uh, soldering iron soldering guns. My original soldering iron was a Weller soldering gun. I must have bought it 1972 maybe. It's here in my shop. I still use it once in a while. Okay. I have an interesting collection of antique soldering irons. Two or three. Now they picked up at yard sales for no good reason. Except I have them. Some of those are really big. They're really big. Uh... There we go. Check it. Solid as can be. Now, I'm not going to test the radio uh, because that will not have had any impact on it. Um, so, where are these point ones? 
Where are these point ones? So there's a couple of fairly large ones up here. That's his point oh five, big and bold. This is a different looking capacitor from the rest too. So I, I just I can't imagine they were stocking all these different manufacturers' parts. And we, we know some of these have been changed, like the big capacitor. So this thing got a pretty good overhaul at some point and loaded in with new parts, which today are old parts. I'm going to guess these guys went in, this one went in, this is original, this is original. I'm guessing. I can't be sure. The ri this one looks different. This one, this one is the same style as this one. Who knows? Can't know for sure. But I do like to think about these things because I think if I can uh, kind of get a story going, it can help me realize more about the radio how it got to be the way it is and there might be some hint or clue there about what I should or shouldn't do with it or what the previous people working on the radio had discovered or were thinking or, or whatever it might be so I'm gonna leave it at that because it's late late in the morning already so thanks a lot for watching uh, tomorrow I'll carry on trying to do some more critical capacitors maybe those point point ones in the filter in the pie filter if I can identify them. And uh, let's just keep plugging away. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, I'm off to have a, a nice outdoor day. See ya.